Hi, I'm Sharon Duke. I'm the Executive Director and CEO of Alliance for Positive Change in New York City. And I'm very proud to be joined here today for this presentation with Meredith Gentis, the Director of Care Management at Ryan Health, and Lindsay Hayek, the Director of Care Management at Alliance for Positive Change. And the three of us are going to be presenting the Alliance Ryan Health Pilot Project to co-locate care management and peer navigation within community health settings. So the goals of our collaboration were to design and implement a medical community partnership between Ryan Health and Alliance that had an overarching goal of increasing patient engagement in medical care. And uh, this main strategy that we were going to use was to integrate peer navigators trained peer navigators into the medical care management teams that were co-located within the clinics. And again, with the goal of increasing linkage to medical care and decreasing missed appointments, uh, and thereby improving the overall health of the Ryan Health patient population. And we were um, able to initiate this pilot, which ultimately has been sustained through Medicaid funding for uh, health home care management services by utilizing startup funds from our local DISRIP uh, provider system through Mount Sinai. So the pilot approach was to, was really threefold. One, we leveraged Alliance's uh, long-term 30 years of um, integrating peer navigators into all of Alliance services. And then we utilized the uh, Ryan Health patient system, data system, to generate lists of clinic patients who had either had missed appointments, um, had two or more ED visits in the past year, or were, had fallen out of care and were marginally engaged. And so uh, through Ryan generating this list of patients who would benefit from targeted outreach with a goal of re-engagement. And then we co-located an Alliance Health Home Care Manager within the Ryan Health Clinic setting, um, collaborating with all of the clinicians, participating in case conferences, and um, not only ensuring linkage to care, but also addressing social determinants of health again with the goal of um, decreasing missed appointments, decreasing ED visits, and increasing health outcomes. Next slide. So just by way of background, Alliance for Positive Change is a multi-service community organization that for 30 years has been transforming the lives of New Yorkers living with HIV and other chronic illnesses. We help people access medical care, manage and overcome addiction, escape homelessness, get back to work, and find community. Grounded in a harm reduction philosophy, Alliance's innovative and tailored programs address the underlying health, economic, and social issues that contribute to poor health outcomes by promoting empowerment, stability, and connection to community. The Ryan Health System, since 1967, has been meeting the community's needs for healthcare services across Manhattan for over five decades, providing access to a wide range of high quality, affordable healthcare services for nearly 50,000 patients each year. Committed to their founding principle of healthcare as a right, not a privilege, Ryan Health delivers comprehensive primary care ranging from women's health, pediatrics, behavioral health, HIV, and chronic disease management through a multiplicity of specialized and tailored programs. And now I'm going to when, uh, move the presentation to my colleague, Lindsay Hayek. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, when looking at the population Alliance serves, most have multiple chronic illnesses. And Ryan's patient demographics closely match alliances, wherein they also have multiple comorbidities. Ryan has many services to better care for them, including a diabetes program, MAP program, and HIV services. 
Uh, so both Alliance and Ryan have experience working with this population and with chronic disease management. And so this partnership was really successful of Alliance and Ryan together. Uh, Alliance works with the patients to address their social determinants of health in order to enhance the care that they need and also any of the additional support that they need in their life. So this may include housing, mental health or substance use, since many of the patients have mental health conditions or chemical dependency. We assess for food insecurity and also assist with entitlements, whether that's advocacy or helping them navigate uh, the entitlement system in New York. The co-located care manager in the medical clinic at Ryan addresses the social determinants of health that I just mentioned, and also helps retain these patients in care. So to do that, the care manager would provide medical and behavioral health navigation, uh, treatment adherence support, transportation assistance to assist with appointment adherence, and linkage to any other community-based support that the patient may need. The co-located care manager provides a variety of services and integrates within the medical clinic. So they coordinate medical care appointments. That is a, a, a big job, especially for high intensive patients who like Meredith, um, I'm sorry, that Sharon mentioned earlier uh, that are disconnected from care. So they coordinate the medical care appointments and by having access to the electronic health record system, this can really be a seamless process. They collaborate with the care team at Ryan, um, specifically attending daily huddles, discussing cases with the nurse care manager, and participating in interdisciplinary case conferences. Uh, service plan development is a collaborative process with the medical care providers right there at, in the clinic with the Ryan staff, and ongoing screening around social determinants of health and wraparound services the patient may need are all done. Additionally, for heart patients, they provide HCBS education and connect them to services as needed. So one of the uh, unique aspects of this collaboration has been the integration of peer navigators as members of the health home care management team. And what Alliance has done is integrated these trained and certified peer navigators who truly function as the feet on the ground for the patients. Together with the care manager and the clinic staff, the peer navigators help patients address any barriers that may be getting in the way of them seeing their doctor or accessing their services. And peers conduct both outreach for patients who have fallen out of care, and they also function as members of the care management team. Next slide. So the beauty of the peer program, and I think a part of what makes the peer navigator so effective is that peers have a shared lived experience with the people that they are reaching out to culturally, ethnically, racially, linguistically, socially, economically, and in terms of other life experiences. So by having these shared experiences, Alliance's peer navigators are able to create relationships with the uh, patients who are either out of care or re-engaged in care, reducing barriers, assisting them in accessing the services that they need, uh, providing coaching that really, through role modeling, promotes long-term healthy behaviors. Next slide. So specifically, uh, peer navigators conduct peer coaching and motivational interviewing. Uh, they provide reminder phone calls to the patients about the various appointments that are upcoming, offering accompaniment, going to their homes, picking them up and, and attending the appointments with them, um, accompanying care managers on home visits and conducting field work, and also um, addressing the social determinants of health that Lindsay had referenced earlier, 
And for those who are out of care, it is the peer navigator who does what we call the warm handoff and remains a part of the team for continuity and continued engagement. So the other thing that I just wanted to point out about um, the peer navigators is that Alliance was able to sustain the peer navigator as a part of our Medicaid health home care management team, because with the addition of the peer navigator to the team, we could increase the caseload to about 55 and then utilize the Medicaid revenues to support both the care manager and the peer navigator. So from a business model perspective, we're able to sustain both the care manager and the peer navigator and the model really improves the health for the patient and benefits everybody, the Alliance organization, Ryan Health and the person living with HIV. So now I'm gonna turn the presentation over to my colleague, Meredith Gentis. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so in thinking when we had the opportunity to develop this program, at Ryan Health, we wanted to really make sure that we were using data to support what kind of patients we would target so that we could make sure we would be able to show that this program had impact. So we had access to a large population health data system through Mount Sinai Hospital, our partner, um, that essentially allowed us to regularly generate lists of patients that we wanted to target. And so we looked at patients who had at least two emergency department visits in the past year, and they had fallen out of care, which we defined by no PCP appointment in the past six months. And while two ER visits was our minimum, realistically, we were looking at patients who some had been to the ER 10, 15, 20 times in the past year. Um, so these are typically very challenging patients to get a hold of. Not only were they high utilizers, they were also missing, they had care gaps, you know, the diabetics would miss their A1Cs. Um, patients over 50 didn't have colonoscopies. So there was a lot of opportunity to really improve these patients' care if we could just get them in. Um, and one of, I think, the most Sharon touched on this quite a bit is that the peers don't just find the patients and bring them in. So they certainly re-engage our patients, but they spend time linking them to health homes case management. They spend time linking them to treatment adherence services. They really talk with the patients in a way that allows them to relate to them, but also allows them to find and address the barriers and the reason for why they aren't coming to care. So they were able to get the patients into our center, but then continued to follow up with them to make sure that they continued to see their primary care provider for the next six months. Next slide. So what we, we definitely want you walking away from this, realizing that co-location really truly works. Um, we, we found that the reason why this was most successful is because our providers here, our diabetes educators, our whole care team was able to take the patient and walk them over to our dedicated care manager. And the peer navigators, when they were on in the field with a patient who was afraid to go to the doctor but willing to go that instant, the peer navigators could call our staff and get them into the center right away. Um, they were able to have instant resources. We were able to pool our resources for determining social determinants of health, for addressing those. And they also provided very intensive field-based outreach. They would call these patients, they would go to these patients' homes, they would really be thorough in their outreach. And we found that because the two different companies really worked as a team, it just worked a lot better for our patients. Next slide. So as far as what the data shows, it, it, it confirms what we, we feel is true. Um, as far as the patients who had a warm handoff to our case manager, 90% of them enrolled into health homes. The case manager's caseload went from zero to 31 in five months. It was actually so fast, we, we felt we had to slow it down at first and we were worried about overwhelming with enrollments. 
um, because the providers just instantly were able to trust the case manager and be able to almost um, sell the services to the patient. And really, it felt like we were working as a team. Um, as of the end of the pilot, um, we had 55 patients from Ryan Health enrolled, and that continues today. As far as following up on missed appointments, there was a 43% um, find and re-engagement rate. And as I mentioned, these are, these are very difficult to engage patients. So that's something we're really proud of. Um, that, that's not something I think you see in a typical care management program. Um, when the Alliance peers were trying to find these patients and, and get them re-engaged, it was an average of four outreach encounters. This was not just a one-time outreach effort. They, they really, they did everything they could to bring these patients in for us. They used different kinds of technology. Um, there's a texting, a lot of time with transportation assistance, and of course having the peers actually come to the appointments with them helped as well. And as far as staffing for the beginning, we had one health home case manager, two peer navigators, plus a supervisor in kind at Ryan and Alliance. Um, and I think one of the things we realized quite quickly is that not only is this a program that works really well, but it's, it was just incredibly popular. And while we started off at one site, it was something we felt that we could expand to other sites. Um, as well. And so despite the pilot being done, it's a relationship that we've continued, not only continued, but have uh, made efforts to growing to expanding to other sites. Um, so we already have co-location at one of our clinics, um, an additional clinic, and we have two more that we, we plan on expanding once we're able to. Next. So looking at the impacts of the pilot project in present day, like Meredith said, uh, there's still care management on site with a caseload of 50 to 60 Ryan Health patients. Uh, the population of the patients being served are uh, over 65 years old, disabled or geriatric with multiple chronic conditions, predominantly Spanish speaking, living in upper Manhattan or in the Bronx. The staffing pattern is still one peer manager, and then there's an additional peer navigator intern as well. Some of the successes with the current patients being served, 98% of the currently enrolled patients have had at least two primary care appointments in the past 12 months, so appointment adherence is still a main priority. And 100% of the currently enrolled patients are consistently engaged with the care management team every month. And this is definitely a challenge uh, that we see in intensive care management. Uh, so just, I think it speaks a lot to see that the patients are regularly engaged with the care manager and then it gets connected to uh, adherence to their appointments. Uh, some of the trends in the services that the care manager is providing at Ryan currently, we're seeing a trend of a lot of coordination and scheduling of non-emergency transportation. And obviously this is connected to improving appointment adherence. Um, and then we also see um, promoting urgent care and same day visits uh, at Ryan instead of using the ED. Uh, same day visits are a lot easier to do with a co-located care manager. They're able to coordinate the same day visit, whether it's the peer making a phone call while they're at the home visit or a patient just walks in uh, because they received a voicemail and they're interested in what they were calling about. So having the care manager on site has been a big help with this. Uh, and then finally, there's a lot of advocacy around durable medical equipment and uh, patients have been successful at receiving these devices uh, as early as same day or next day. And that says a lot to the coordination within the medical care team and the care manager um, co-located with them. Another success uh, is around the reduction in ED visits. So out of the 31 patients in the first six months of the project that Meredith spoke about, nine patients had a cumulative total of 14 ED visits. So now one year later, the caseload is almost doubled and only two of the original nine patients had ED visits. Additionally, even with double the number of patients, the ED visits have remained constant at 14 over the past year, which is a huge success. Uh, and I also just wanna note in the picture on the slide, uh, 
the person in the middle is Ivan, and he was the care manager that started with the with the program and is still there at Ryan, providing services and uh, you know being part of the team. So he's he's been fantastic. So our takeaways from this presentation is that co-location of community-based care management within medical clinical settings works. And it is a model that if you have access to Medicaid for health home care management services, you can leverage those Medicaid dollars to underwrite the co-location of the health home care manager within the medical clinic. And you're creating a partnership that benefits everybody associated with that collaboration the, uh, with the patient front and center as being the primary recipient of the, um, the value of the partnership by the teamwork between the health and care manager and the clinicians uh, surrounding the patient and incorporating the patient into decisions about how to provide and sustain the best quality of care for that person with the goal of improved health. So, but like everything else in life, partnerships, collaborations, teamwork, take work. And, um, and they take commitment. And it is an investment that uh, we all believe is very worthwhile. So part of what made our partnership successful is that we started out with weekly planning calls to, um, to refine our protocols, to understand referral mechanisms, to uh, integrate alliance and educate alliance about how the Ryan health system works, where the patients are when they first come in, how the appointment structure occurs. Um, we also had business associates agreements and data sharing agreements so that we could have full transparency in our communications and um, the cooperation around the data and the reporting metrics and the, de the development of those collaboratively was also of critical importance. And then our teamwork, uh, communicating with one another, tracking uh, each patient's participation in the various services, learning from things that didn't work as much as learning from the things that did work and integrating those lessons into the ongoing work that we did together. So uh, bringing us together, co-locating the community partner within the medical facility, uh, enhancing the patient's experience by supplementing and augmenting that model with the peer navigator, all told really came up with a model that as Meredith has said, not only did it work successfully, but we also decided to scale it within the Ryan Health System, and we believe that it is a model that could be scaled to other uh, communities and creating those kinds of partnerships between community care management providers and medical providers, obviously with the goal of improved health outcomes for the patients. So that concludes our presentation. And uh, again, I'm Sharon Duke, Executive Director of Alliance for Positive Change, and very proud to have been joined in partnership with Meredith Gentis from the Director of Care Manager from Ryan Health and Lindsay Hayek, the Director of Care Management at Alliance. Thank you all so very much. <laughs>